Uh, yep. Uh, request to please confirm if my audio and video is clear to everyone. Nice. Can you please confirm if my audio and video is clear to everyone? Okay. Fair enough. Just a minute. So, uh, uh, a warm welcome to all of you for uh, our triple A live class. Uh, though we understand that it has started uh, late, but yes, we'll cover up the syllabus by having some extra classes. Uh, okay. Now. First of all, uh, before we start our discussion into the AAA course, we need to understand about the AAA paper. What is uh, AAA all about? Okay, it is then we will be in a better position uh, to understand the chapters and the uh, uh, questions in a much better manner. So understand, guys. Just first, let's understand the paper. AAA paper is uh, uh, you can say all together a different paper from all the professional papers. Like, uh, so for example, if you are studying a professional paper like SBR or like you can say ATX or like SBL, what happens there, uh, there is a lot of knowledge that you need to grasp and then you have to replicate the knowledge in the question and answer set, right? But what happens in AAA paper is not, the, is not that way. The knowledge is there, but knowledge forms only the, you can say 30 percentage, the rest 70 percent is only the practice. So in AAA, the knowledge that you have to uh, gain is very less, the practice that you have to do is very, very, very high. Uh, you will see when I will draft the answers in the class that uh, the knowledge which I'm giving in, you in the class and the questions which I, which I will write, I will just apply that knowledge. I will not use altogether the knowledge or I'll not write the provisions of any standard. No, I'll not do that in, in any. Might be in few chapters I will do, okay? But not in uh, all the chapters, okay? I can say 90% of chapters I will not be doing that. Uh, one more important point. Uh, there are certain uh, topics in this uh, AAA paper which will require your understanding of IFRS. So if uh, I believe all of you have completed SBR paper, is there anyone who has not completed SBR so far? Anyone in the class? Tejashri, Sandeep, Neha, Ishan, can you please confirm? You are appearing in March. Very good. So uh, it's recommended that you appear SBR either before uh, AAA or along with AAA. SBR is clear. Uh, fair enough. So Ishan, uh, when did you clear your SBR? Was it long back? In September, uh, that's not, not uh, so bad, long back. Okay, no mind. Uh, so I believe you ha do have command over the IFRS. You do have command over the IFRS, right? Uh, Neha, yeah, uh, I know that uh, you are in my SBR batch for December itself, right? So uh, that's for not that's not an issue. Now let's understand about the AAA paper. Now, see, guys, this uh, AAA paper is divided into uh, eight parts. It's divided into eight parts. Now, part A, regulatory environment. The you can say uh, yeah, part A regulatory environment. Uh, this is somewhere uh, I'm somewhere talking about the law. Okay. In this, the knowledge that you have to gain is very high, but from an exam perspective, the relevance of this topic is very uh, you can say a moderate, not too low not too high, but it's moderate. Okay. So uh, you can say it can be tested in the exam for around uh, eight to 10 marks. Okay. Uh, the, and there are attempts in which this topic has not been asked also altogether not been asked also. Okay. But yes, if it gets asked, it will be asked for somewhere in the range of eight to 10 marks. Okay. Then comes professional and ethical matters. I'll say this is of very high importance, very, 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 very high importance. Why? Because if you see uh, with past papers of around uh, eight to 10 attempts, if not, none of them, you will not find even a single attempt wherein uh, ethical matters are not tested. Even if it is tested for eight marks, but it will get tested, that is for sure. There is uh, no, not even a single attempt in which this is not tested. So the, uh, you can say in this, uh, this is of very high importance. And when you're studying professional and ethical matters, when you're studying professional ethical matters, I will say, the knowledge that you have to gain is very minimal and the knowledge that you have, uh, and the application is very, very high. Okay. Like very different from regulatory environment, wherein the knowledge that you have to gain is very high, 
and the application is very low okay so you can see the regulatory environment is much of a theoretical topic professional and ethical matters is a uh, much of a you can say application based topic now comes quality control and practice management okay uh, again this is also of a moderate level not too high not too low okay wherein i will we will discuss that the work which is being which is already done by the audit team the work which is already done by the audit team okay was there any control issues or were there any quality issues okay we'll discuss that those points here also in practice management we'll discuss see can you tell me what is the meaning of practice anyone can you tell me what is the meaning of practice in uh, in our uh, ca industry or acc industry what is the meaning of practice can anyone tell me come on guys holding cop and providing uh, consulting okay uh, yes consulting auditing uh, and other services right so that's called practice right so in practice you have two type of assignments one is audit services and another is non audit services okay now uh, what is the meaning of practice management means to decide whether i have to accept the audit client or not whether i have to accept the non audit client or not okay if i am accept if i am already having an audit client whether to accept non audit services from that client or not basically managing the practice is called practice management is called as practice management okay so we have to study with that as well uh, what are the restrictions for a qualified acca if he is holding any cop uh, in your terms if we are holding cop as an acca what are the restrictions can he advertise or not okay how can he get new clients okay all those things will be discussing in practice management okay now part d that is planning and conducting the audit of historical financial statements see in this uh, in this chapter and i'll tell you that this is the most important part of our triple a paper this is the most important part of our triple a paper part d most important uh, generally we see a uh, a question of around 30 to 40 marks being tested in every attempt from this part alone from this part alone a question of 30 to 40 marks so you can understand the importance of this part okay you can understand the importance of this part as i have told a uh, regulatory environment uh, can be tested cannot be tested but if it gets tested it will get tested in the range of around uh, 8 to 10 marks uh, professional and ethical matters it will get tested every time but yes in a range of around 8 to 10 marks okay so this is a mandatory question you can say part c again it can get tested or it can not get tested okay but if it gets tested it will be tested in the range of around 8 to 15 marks but part d it will get tested every attempt and that too for in the range of 30 to 40 marks okay now part e completion review and reporting completion review and reporting in this chapter in the chapter we will understand once the audit is done once the audit is done once the audit is done okay how will that be reviewed how will that be reviewed okay and how will that be reported basically we will understand about the review we will understand about the audit reports okay now uh, part f okay talking about part a e exam importance a question of 25 marks is mandate is a mandate is a mandate okay so i will give you a very high importance sorry i will give you a very high importance so uh, if you can see if you just cover up these two parts a question of 65 marks around 50 to 60 marks gets covered so these two parts are a very high of a very high importance of very 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 high importance now comes other assignments uh, the again the weightage is a uh, moderate uh, in this we will st study about what is forensic accounting and forensic auditing what is uh, due diligence uh, okay and we'll st understand about uh, going concern issues so all those things like small small points we will be studying about in the part f we will study about the esg reporting okay all those things will be studying in part f that is moderate now part g current issues there are uh, current uh, issues uh, for this attempt as well understand what are current issues uh, pertaining to our syllabus for part a to part f pertaining to our syllabus from part a to part f if the examining team writes any new article okay those become the current issues for the our syllabus okay so current issues you can say it's not a separate part but a, but a article by the examining team on the part a to part f that's all a current issue that is all a current issue 
I hope your uh, the understanding of the syllabus is very much clear to all of you. Is the syllabus understanding clear to all of you? Uh, fair enough. Now, coming to exam structure, guys. Uh, so, exam structure will have three questions. We'll have three questions and two sections. So, how it will be drafted? Section A, section B, okay, or the section one, section two, whatever you want to say. Now, section A will be a fifty marks. Section B will also be fifty marks. Section A fifty marks will have one question of fifty one fifty marks. Only one question of fifty marks. And section B will have two questions of twenty five marks each. So fifty plus twenty five plus twenty five is hundred marks. So exam structure is uh, clear to all of you. Exam structure is clear to all of you. Now coming to paper pattern. Like uh, how will this syllabus? How will this syllabus be mapped to these three questions? Understand? Examining team and the past paper uh, history recommends us that. Slavers area D, that is part D, planning and conducting the audit of historical financial statements, which can get tested for around thirty to forty marks, as I told, will be asked only and only in question number one. Only and only in question number one. Nowhere else. Nowhere else. Okay. See, part D will be asked only in question number one. Now comes part E, that is completion review and reporting. Completion review and reporting. For this, the standard, uh, the examining team says that it will be asked as a either a part of question number two fully twenty five marks or question number three fully twenty five marks. See, I told you that in uh, section B there are two questions and each question is of twenty five marks, right? And uh, in this also I told that part E will be tested in the exam for twenty five marks. So what will happen? Either question number two will be wholly from part E or either question number three will be wholly from part E of twenty five marks. Okay. So, part question number one is sorted. Question number two or three is sorted. Now comes the remaining areas. Now comes the remaining areas. What about the remaining areas? It is part F, part A, part P, part C. Examining team suggests that it can be tested as part of uh, section A or section B. Anywhere it can get it, it can come. Okay, anywhere it can come. There is no hard and fast rule that this will come here itself. No, but it can come. It can get asked in any questions. It can get asked in any questions. Okay, but uh, so that's all about the mapping of the syllabus to the exam structure. Now comes the time element. I'll tell you guys uh, what happens in triple A and SBR. You know, uh, mostly in triple A, I'll tell you, meet uh, students who pass and students who fail. You know, there's a difference of only two marks. Uh, if uh, if you just understand about the analysis of the past attempts. Which the examining team uh, suggests us the students who have passed, the students who have passed, a number of them have scored only fifty one, and the number and the students who have failed, many of them have scored only forty nine. What does it recommend? What does it suggest us that the students who have failed fail by one marks, and the students who have passed just passed by one extra marks, just passed by one extra marks? Why? Why? This is also time management. Because in triple A, the most important issue is the time management. It's not that when you read an exam paper, you will feel that uh, I don't, I don't know the answer of this one. I can guarantee that you will not feel like that. I can guarantee that all the questions when you see, you will feel, oh, I need know the answer. I know the answer because I don't know. There is a uh, less of a knowledge, more of an application that is required. Okay. So and in the class we will be practicing a lot of questions. So uh, definitely that will give you an understanding. Uh, and if you uh, probably if you cover all the uh, exam questions and all the assignments which I will give you, then uh, definitely in the exam nothing will be new for you. But yes, you will again lack in the exam due to time management. And that's not a challenge that one or two student faces. That's a challenge that majority of the students faces. Why? Because they don't appear for mock tests, they don't appear for mock tests. Just allow me a moment, please. So, uh, if you uh, really want to understand about and uh, don't want to face this issue in the exam. 
first thing which you have to follow is this rule of 1.95 minutes per mark see what does it mean total time which is given to you in the exam is 3 hour 15 minutes that uh, that comes to around 195 minutes and the total marks which you have to write in the exam is 100 marks so the time per marks is comes to 1.95 minutes per mark now section a is a 50 marks so how much time that you should devote is 97 minutes 50 minutes uh, 97 minutes 50 seconds now understand guys it's not uh, possible basically to uh, in the exam that we will uh, divide ourselves in and we will restrict ourselves basically to only 97 minutes but what what do i want to say with this one so basically the um, uh, the message that i want to give you with this one is what happens when uh, when a student writes question number 1 they are so much uh, involved in that question that they continue to write for 2 hours and you have to avoid that see 97 minutes means what around 1 hour 30 minutes right around 1 hour 30 minutes or or 1 hour 40 minutes but the students uh, gets involved in that question for uh, more than 2 hours and what happens the time left the time left is only 45 minutes for question section b and then uh, they uh, hurry and then basically what happens is basically the quality of the section b gets deteriorated you have to avoid that you have to avoid that right to the point and move ahead it no need not write a story in the exam definitely we practice a lot of questions in the class and you will get to know how to uh, manage this thing but definitely you have to understand that time management is an area where you can lack this is a first and the foremost and the very important point which i want to convey to you guys and you have to keep in mind uh, this from the day one itself that the time management is the key to success in triple a paper if you can manage time you can manage all other things if you can manage time, you can manage all other things in the exam. Now, the steps to answer a question. Again, the uh, the approach is again altogether different. Uh, if you'd have asked in SBR paper, sir, what is the steps to answer a question? I will say that first read the question, uh, read the requirement, read question, read the uh, basically read the requirement. Okay. Now, basically, what happens? This is what I say generally. See, in all other questions, I will say first read the question, then read the requirement then plan the answer and then develop the answer this is what i say in uh, sbr this is what i say in frs as well okay and this uh, i assume that this is what the other teachers say in uh, atx or spl or any other paper okay but uh, this is altogether there is an altogether different approach for answering a question in triple a here you have to read the requirement first then you have to read the question Can anyone tell me why? You have to first read the requirement and then you have to read the question. Can anyone tell me why? Anyone, please come on. Point of view. Okay, I'll tell you an example. Let's suppose you are solving a, a paper question of SBR. Okay, and the question is of from consolidation. So first you read the question. Okay, uh, first you read the whole question. Okay, the extract that is given, and then you come to requirement, right? To understand, okay, I have understood the question now. Let's understand what is being asked in the question. Okay, because you have to understand the facts, and then you understand the requirement, and then you can uh, write your answer accordingly. But what if I happen in triple A? If you read the question first, you will get lost. But what should I do with these facts? Because the facts will be a, a business oriented facts. The facts will be a business oriented facts. So you will get lost at what exactly I have to do with this question. Now, first, if you read the requirement, your mind will get channelized. Okay, I have to think around these. I have to think around these. So in AAA paper, first and foremost requirement is read the requirement first. Don't read the question first. Read the requirement first. Then read the question because you have to channelize your mind. You have to channelize the mind because this uh, paper is a uh, application based paper, not like SBR or any other paper. Okay, so read the requirement first, then read the question, then plan your answer, and then develop your answer. Okay, now coming to uh, the sixth part, it is knowledge of IFRS. As I have already told, that knowledge of IFRS is a very important part, and you know in which areas. Tell me here, uh, come here. 
in uh, these uh, seven areas basically can you tell me uh, which are the two important areas that i told for the exam which are the two important areas which i told for the exam in these seven areas which are the two important areas d and e very good ishan now what you have to do in d planning and conducting the audit of historical finance structure but let's suppose you are auditing a historical uh, auditing property plan and equipment how will you audit property plan and equipment don't you think you will see the applicability of uh, is 16 is 38 or is 40 uh, as the case may be or is 23 right or is 21 or is uh, or ifrs 5 right or, or is 41 You have to see the applicability whether if it is applicable whether it has been applied uh, uh, app, uh, correctly or not. Tell me. Let's suppose you are uh, auditing a sale based payments. You are auditing a sale based payments. Don't you think you need to see the applicable uh, uh, whether the provisions of IFRS two has been uh, appropriately applied or not? Tell me. If you are auditing a uh, financial statement for sale based payments, let's suppose there is an SBP reserve which is being recognized in the financial statements. Whether that amount is correct or not, whether the uh, the nomenclature which is being recognized is correct or not, do you think you need to have an understanding of IFRS two for that, right? And now, when you are reviewing any work done, when you are reviewing any work done again as a manager, if you review any work done, again, don't you think you need to have an understanding of IFRS? Because what is audit? Audit is of historical financial statements. and how do we prepare if uh, financial statements by applying ifrs so if we have to audit something we need to understand how it is prepared and how it is prepared by using uh, by applying ifrs so if i have to audit i need to know ifrs so part e and part d and part e is all about ifrs and which is which form the significant part of our syllabus and here it comes see the knowledge of ifrs part d and part d and part e it's all about ifrs again though the approach will be altogether different to what we applied in sbr but yes it will require a detailed knowledge of ifrs if any student who has given sbr a uh, way back i will recommend you to start revising ifrs from now onwards okay i will uh, strictly recommend you to start revising ifrs from now itself now comes the success formula understand see the success formula is uh, very easy but uh, if when i when i say it it will be very 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 easy but uh, it's very difficult to practice this success formula in triple a okay first always try to understand the requirement uh, many a times we see uh, and there is an examiner comment also that the examiner is trying to ask something else and the student is answering something else so first try to understand what is being asked in the question okay uh, many times we as the students fail to understand the requirement itself okay so focus on understanding the requirement okay okay now then plan your answer properly when you, you will see uh, that when i will plan the answer in the uh, in the class i will devote uh, a maximum time of mine in planning the answer and very less time in developing that answer a very less time very less time in developing that answer let's suppose if i have to devote a uh, 1 hour 30 minutes to question number 1 you will see that i will devote uh, around 30 minutes in reading the whole question in reading the whole question and again 30 minutes in planning my answer and then only 30 minutes in developing the answer so 50 minutes question 50 uh, marks question i will write the answer only in 30 minutes but i will devote 1 hour in uh, understanding the requirement understanding the question and understand planning my answer and only 30 minutes in writing the answer uh, only 30 minutes in writing the answer so that's how uh, basically this paper is dra uh, drafted you can say okay and you have to follow plenty of past paper questions exam papers okay see when you will, when you will uh, study in this uh, chapter as well my approach will be that i will be uh, giving you the questions and the assignments from the past papers from the past papers Uh, i'll just show you one thing just give me a minute please see this is a topic that you have to study today so what i what i will do for this topic see you will first i will discuss the chapter overview then i will uh, discuss what is the concept building what are the points that you have to understand in this chapter why i am writing these points because see understand when you will revise or let's suppose when you are revising a month before your exams you need not go through the overall overall notes no you just need to see these pointers 
and try to recall the concepts in your mind. That's all. That's all. Because the knowledge forms the again a very small part, and the application is a very high, significant part. So I just I will just give you the pointers. That these are the points which we will discussing in the class for this one. Okay. Now technical article is there. No, there is no technical article for this one. Then the past exam. In the past, when these questions have been tested in the exam. Okay. In the past, what are the questions and how, for how many marks it has been tested in the exam? So now you have to approach. You have to practice these questions. You have to practice these questions. And also, what I will do. Uh, these questions are also available in a BBP uh, revision kit. I will map these also. There are few questions which are not available in BBP revision kit, which I will be sharing with you. Those questions that you can practice. But yes, we have to understand that along with covering the BBP revision kit. Okay. See, uh, ideally, BBP revision kit is uh, sufficient. But there are questions, additional questions in past for exams, which are not covered in BBP revision kit. But are very, very, very important to be covered from an exam perspective. Okay, so you have to cover those also. That's the reason why I have written here. You have to cover plenty of past exam papers. Again, I have so success formula time management is a very important key, and examiner's report a very important, very important part. The reason, uh, the reason is in the triple A paper there are a lot of uh, very small, small errors that we do. Okay. Which will get rectified only if we refer examiner's report in the class. And the last point is no rote learning required. Not even a single point which you have to learn for the exam. Not even a single point. Okay, might be for regulatory environment chapter you will have to uh, learn few points, and that to not something major. You have to learn few points, but from a overall syllabus perspective, the point that you have to learn is very minimal, and the points which you have to apply knowledge is very high. Link your knowledge. Basically, you have to apply your knowledge. That's all. Now, marking scheme generally is uh, whenever you write any one point, you will get a one mark for that point. And there are cases where you will get two mark per point, which are specific cases. We'll discuss in the class. What are the areas where we'll get two marks for the point? I will be. I will guide you in the marking scheme as well. Okay. Now, building blocks. Few important points in building blocks. Is it clear, everyone, so far about the paper? Everyone. Anyone having any issues? Come on, guys. Yes, and the most important part of this class, uh, the class needs to be a uh, uh, interactive one, and uh, not only me delivering the lectures. I don't uh, like altogether a one-sided class. Come on, guys. Is it clear, everyone, so far? Okay. Okay. Now. Coming to uh, building blocks, few important points uh, with the knowledge of which will be required throughout our syllabus. Throughout our syllabus, okay. Now, first is materiality. Anyone can anyone tell me what is the meaning of materiality? What do you understand by the term materiality? What do you understand by the term materiality? And why do we find materiality? Don't look into the screen. Uh, just uh, apply your knowledge and tell me what do you understand by the term materiality? Tell me, guys. Come on. What do you understand by the term materiality? You have to start thinking, guys. You have to start thinking because triple paper is all about your thought process. So start thinking. Tell me, what uh, do you understand by the term materiality? Even if you are wrong, that's totally fine. But give a try. Please try. Start approaching the answer. Materiality means importance. Okay, something that impacts the orator's opinion. Uh, Isan and uh, Tejasri, uh, Tejasri, you are correct. Uh, but why do we calculate materiality uh, in? Uh, why are we studying materiality in audit basically? Why are we studying materiality? And I am saying that it is required in uh, overall syllabus. Why? We didn't say this in uh, SBR. Though we studied materiality in SBR as well, but we uh, didn't give that much of importance to materiality in SBR. But why are we giving uh, a such a significant materiality 
uh, sir, a significant importance to maturity in, a, in our triple A class. Tell me, omission, mistreated, or obscure of which leads to mistreatment of FS? Uh, no, Nia. This is not my answer that I'm looking at. Can anyone tell me why is uh, maturity uh, of uh, such a significant importance uh, in uh, triple A paper? It is not possible to audit all the items. Why it is not possible to audit all the items? You are correct, Tejasri. Please, uh, let's let's drill down more. Why it is not possible to audit all the items? Due to what time taking? Okay, and risks. Okay, and very good. And what? Come on, guys. Come on, answer. Even if you are wrong. That's not a challenge, but try to answer. There's no one judging you out here. Be yourself and answer whatever you think like your uh, is correct according to you. Tejasri, uh, you are saying only risk. Is it about? Uh, is it only due to the risk that we are not auditing all the items? Tell me what else. Again, I'm repeating my question. Why do you think uh, we uh, give maturity a very high importance in triple A paper? I'll tell you, if you know maturity, if you just know maturity, you can score around seven to eight marks in triple A paper if you don't know anything uh, else also. Just from maturity, you can score seven to eight marks in triple A paper. Now, Please tell me. So you understand that maturity is of very high importance in AAA. So you need to understand about maturity in practically. See, we do have studied uh, maturity in our, if you are from CA background, you will have studied uh, maturity in your CA also. But I don't want that answer. I want a practical or your your answer. Why do you think uh, maturity is of high importance in audit? No one is willing to answer now. Let me give you. Uh, management policy of clubbing small items together which are not material uh, correct but uh, from a different perspective let me answer it first thing management takes one whole year management takes one whole year to do the accounting we have only 15 20 days or 30 days to do the audit is it first point is it practically possible to audit what is done by the management in one year to audit that item in 30 days, is it practically possible to do that? No, that's why we do maturity. Now, but uh, how will maturity help in that case? So in maturity, in maturity, what we do is we do, uh, we identify two things, quantitative factors, qualitative factors, qualitative factors as well. In quantitative factors, what we do is Anything uh, above this item, anything above this benchmark, anything above this benchmark, I will audit. First point, anything above this benchmark, I will audit. Second, if anything is below this benchmark, if anything is below this benchmark as well, but I feel that that can be of very high importance, I will audit that as well. Okay. If anything is above this benchmark, but I feel that is not that important, I will not audit that. I will give you example. Let's suppose, let's suppose Reliance bank balance is zero. Reliance bank balance is zero. And its maturity and its maturity is let's suppose two crores. Can we say that we will not audit bank? Can we say that we will not audit bank? Tell me, all of you. Can we say that? Come on, guys, don't make it a one sided lecture. Come on. Keep on punching your views. Like, uh, it has to be a discussion. Triple A is all about discussion, guys. Be active in the class, please, all of you. Tell me your views. Can we say that we will not audit uh, cash and bank? Have to audit, right? We have to definitely audit because we have seen that uh, like many scams uh, happening in the past 
due to bank account, right? Due to bank account, because uh, the bank statements were forged, or you can say the bank confirmations were not taken by the auditors, and we have found the fraud being happening, right? So, cash and bank is an area which we have to audit irrespective of any given thing. Even if the balance is zero or negative or whatever it is, we have to do the audit. Now, let's suppose revenue, revenue. Let's suppose the revenue is uh, below the maturity. Can I say that we will not audit uh, the revenue? Can we say that we will not audit the revenue? No, we cannot say that. Why? Because revenue is an area which impacts the overall financial statements. Why? Because if there is a revenue, there will be cost of goods sold. If there is a revenue, if the revenue is wrong, cost of goods sold may, might also be wrong due to matching concept. If revenue is wrong, my uh, this one, my profit will also be wrong. If revenue is wrong, my trade receivables will be wrong. If revenue is wrong, my cash, cash and bank will be wrong. If my profit is wrong, my retained earnings is wrong. So don't you think revenue has a pervasive effect in the financial statements, right? Has a pervasive effect. Now you must ask, what is the meaning of pervasive? What is the meaning of pervasive? Can anyone, anyone tell me what is the meaning of pervasive? Anyone tell me what is the meaning of pervasive? Anything which impacts the financial statements but more than 60% of the financial statements. Pervasive means more than 60% of the financial statements is called as pervasive. Is this a limit of 60% given anywhere in the standards? No, no. This is a professional judgment that we have to apply. This is a professional judgment that we have to apply. Okay. So basically, uh, what I was trying to say is we have to identify the areas, the financial statement captions, which are of importance during the audit, which uh, as rightly mentioned by Tejasri as well, uh, the areas which have risks, which have risks, which have risks. So it is because of that, you will understand when we calculate maturity, the first thing that we do in the audit, the first thing that we do in the audit as part of uh, syllabus area D is planning, is planning. And in planning, what do we do? We find the areas, we find the areas which are of risk, which is having significant risk, which is having significant risks. Which having significant risks okay so you will see that we will devote around uh two classes just on discussing what is a risk and uh, and, uh, and understanding how to identify the risky areas in the financial statements okay uh, and you will uh, you will not be surprised to see that the risks are also of multiple types and uh, deciding the audit risk is not an easy task in the practical application now Coming to uh, building blocks again. Now, see, see, understand. Quantity factor, we are, we are understanding maturity only from a quantity factor now. We are not understanding maturity from a qualitative factor, which I will be discussing with you in the class in the relevant chapters. Okay. Now, now let's understand maturity from a quantitative perspective. The standard says that uh, maturity defines the nature, extent, and timing of our audit procedures. Since we cannot audit the whole FS, okay, we have to uh, we have to you can say uh, scope in. We have to scope in and scope out our financial to captions. Means uh, there are might must be some FS captions which we have to consider in our audit. There must be some FS captions which we will not consider in our audit. Okay, so that's the meaning. We will uh, scope in and scope out our audit procedures. Okay. Now, uh, FS caption is material. Material means we'll perform our audit procedures on that. If it exceeds, if it exceeds five to ten percent of profit before tax, or one to two percent of total assets, and zero point five to one percent of total revenue, okay, you will get one mark for calculating and commenting on materiality. Wherever you are calculating and commenting on materiality, you will get one mark for it in the exam. You get one mark just for calculating and commenting on maturity. You will get one mark. So in the exam, the uh, the uh, the total amount of profit before tax will be given. The amount of FS caption will be given. You just need to compare the FS caption with the profit before tax and comment whether it is material or not. Okay. So in one line, in one line, in one line, and you will get one mark for that. You will get one mark for that. 
okay so it's very easy it says a very easy scoring mark it's a very easy scoring mark right now uh, just uh, i what i will recommend you guys uh, please uh, look into this please look into this one and tell me if you have any question in mind ideally you should have a question in mind ideally you should have a question in mind so but uh, first look into this and tell me if do you have any queries or is it clear to everyone tell me guys if no then i'll ask if you think that you have understood everything then i'll ask my query i'll ask that question to you guys so please uh, look into it properly again i'll give you a hint here i have done if it exceeds 5 to 10% of profit before tax what does it mean if it exceeds 5 to 10% what does this line mean if it exceeds 5 to 10% of profit before tax if you can explain me this one if anyone can explain this thing what does it mean if it exceeds 5 10% of profit before tax anyone come on guys come on tejasvi ishan sandeep uh, neha ketki and uh, someone who is called also called as samson the item is material if it is more than 5 10% of profit before tax tejasvi uh, you didn't understand the question again uh, okay if i say that if it is material uh, if it exceeds 5 10% of profit before tax understand this line you have to read between the lines you have to read in between the lines if i am saying if it exceeds 5 10% let's suppose let's suppose uh, a, a particular fs caption is 6% of profit for tax can i say that is material can i say that is material if it is 6% of profit before tax tell me tejas sri very good question uh, very good question uh, ishan okay sandeep then if you are saying uh, uh, if in 6% it is material then why are we uh, so it means anything above 5% is material why are we giving a limit of 10% in that case why 10% in that case why 10 percentage tell me why 10 percentage come on anyone tell me if you are saying that in six, uh, if anything is 6% of materiality uh, is 6% of profit before tax that is material so i should directly rather than writing this i should have written this one this way no anything uh, above 5% of profit before tax is material ideally i should have written it this way then why 5 10% i am writing understand the logic guys i'll give you an example and explain this one okay example let's suppose profit uh, before tax is uh, dollar 1000 or 1 million dollar 1 million okay now there are uh, three companies basically understand okay just give me a minute i'll explain here it here in different manner understand there are three companies company a or fs caption uh, let's suppose let me explain the way okay now uh, let's suppose pp
is a dollar eight thousand. And, uh, okay, yeah. So these two are there. Now understand. <coughs> now company A. Uh, listing. There are two companies also at it. Okay. Company B. Company A is you can say uh when you understand the company, company A is more risky company. Company B is less risky company. Less risky company. Okay. Or if I will say company A is you can say Infosys, and company B uh, is let's suppose you can say yes bank. Okay, so company A is a bit, little bit risky and company B is less risky in process. Now, both of them is having uh, this situation itself. Okay, now let's analyze. Tell me, uh, tell me in Yes Bank, if you go as an auditor, will you want to do more audit or less audit? Tell me, will you want to do more audit or less audit? More audit, okay. Everyone, please focus on this example. Please focus on this example. We will do a uh, more audit, more work to be done, more work to be done. Why? Why will why will we we'll take more work? Why will do? Because the company is more risky, and here we'll do comparatively less work. Tell me yes or no. Comparatively less work. Is this clear, everyone? Okay. Now, if we have to do more work, if we have to do more work. The maturity should be high or the maturity should be low. Tell me. Maturity should be high or maturity should be low. Means lower maturity, lower materiality. And this one means higher maturity. Right? Now, in this case, see for assets. The total percentage is one to two percentage. We might cover consider covering one percent of total assets as our maturity. One percent of assets as our maturity. In which case it becomes how much? One million. Two point zero one is ten thousand. So our maturity is ten thousand. And in this case, in this case, PPE is material. PPE is material and intangible assets. Intangible assets. I will make it uh, sixteen thousand. Intangible PPE is material, and intangible assets are immaterial. Is it clear for company A? Now let's understand for company B, Infosys, which is less risky. Means we have to do less work. Means higher maturity. Maturity should be higher. If the maturity is higher, if the benchmark is higher, means we have to do less work. We have to do less work. We have to do less work. I hope you are understanding this point. I hope you are understanding this point. Now, higher maturity means we have to do less work. So let's. What we'll do is we'll keep it as two percent of total assets. We'll keep it as two percent of total assets. Let's suppose. What will happen? Two percent total assets will be twenty thousand, right? So our maturity will be twenty thousand in this case. Now here, both PPE and intangible assets are immaterial. Are you understanding the relevance of this percent of this range? Are you understanding the relevance of this range? All of you. Mr. Samsung, whoever it is, please change your name to your actual name so it uh, so it becomes easy for me to call out that. Okay, now understand. 
so my question is what percentage should be taken based on based on the level of risk that the uh, overall company or that fs capson is has okay based on the level of risk now how to assess and comment upon maturity okay this i will be discussing and to be discussed discussed in part b of the syllabus part d and part e part because the approach will change there okay of the syllabus now uh, i hope it is clear about the maturity just the way how we have to assess and comment will be different in part d and part e see understand i will tell you the approach also okay though i will discuss in much in detail in in that part d and part e but yes i will give you a basic understanding understand one approach is first i will calculate the maturity first i will calculate the maturity okay just like the way we did here we calculate the maturity that this is our maturity this is our maturity and then whatever we will see that okay anything above this is material anything below this is material immaterial this is approach number 1 approach number 2 is we will see that okay this fs caption is having this much balance total assets is having this much let's compare these two if it exceeds 5 percentage it is material if it is below 5 percentage it is immaterial are you understanding these two approaches are you understanding these two approach you will have to follow these two approach okay you will have to follow both the approaches but the approach will change according to the questions and i will guide you that in which which type of questions we you will have to follow which approach that's the reason i am not writing that here because that will be part specific okay that we will discuss in the class uh, see i'll i'll tell you i'll give you example i'll give you an example how did we analyze that yes bank is a risky company and infosys is a less risky company tell me mr samson how did we analyze that uh, infosys is a less risky because of recent news exactly that's what will be given in the question as well that's what will be given in the question as well the news will be given in the question right the news the you can say the recent happenings of the company it will be given okay which will help you analyze whether the company is a risky or not a risky now let's suppose the company is a listed company there are two companies one company is listed and the one another company is not listed tell me which one is comparatively risky which one is comparatively risky listed there are two companies one company is having a uh, debt and the another company is having is debt free tell me which one which one do you think is more risky the one with debt and the or the one with not no debt with that one with the debt okay there are uh, two companies uh one with uh, having a centralized control and another company with having decentralized control tell me which one is risky centralized control means one person having all the control and decentralized control means different persons having control over different things tell me which one is more risky centralized control or decentralized control centralized control is more risky why because if one power one person has all the power he might he might manipulate things he might manipulate things right so this is how you have to analyze whether the company is a risky or not a risky are you understanding it now the capital structure of the company the economic environment of the company right in which the uh, in which the company operates okay you can say the management structure of the company all those things the debt of the company okay the recent news of the ha recent happenings of the company all those things helps to analyze whether the company is a risky or not which will be given in the question again i told again i i'll reiterate the same thing Triple A is all about your. It's not about the how much knowledge that you have. It's not about how much knowledge that you have. It's about how well you can apply the knowledge. Triple A is not about the knowledge that you have. Triple A is all about how well the know how well you can apply the knowledge that you have. Even if you have very less knowledge and you have the ability to apply the knowledge in a wonderful manner, you can definitely excel in a much better manner. Then the student who has very high knowledge, but a very low application skills. So, and application skill is something which can which can be developed 
even if you are not having it as of now, but can be developed with two things. First, with a very high level of interaction in the class, a very high level of interaction in the class, high level of interaction in the class. Second, by practicing a lot of questions. That's the only way out to develop the application skills. Or if you're working in a audit firm, that will again also give you a very high application skills. Now, the second building block is a firm of certified chartered accountants. Let's suppose I, I start with a very, very basic uh, background. In India, in India, uh, let's suppose there is a firm, there is a firm uh, wherein, wherein uh, basically, let's suppose few CAs and few graduates have entered into partnership. Can we call that firm as a CA firm? Few graduates and few CAs have uh, formed, uh, entered into partnership. Can we say it as a partnership for CA firm? Tell me. Can we tell it as a CA firm? Yes, Sandeep, Arisha. Do you think as per ACC, uh, CA uh, professional ethics, ICI professional ethics, you are not allowed to enter into partnership uh, with uh, with non CAs, right? There is a restriction on entering of entering into partnership, right? You can enter into partnership only with specified persons like CS or any other like uh, or the uh, in organizations with which ICAI has memorandum of, of understanding, not with anyone else. Okay. Similarly, similarly, it has for ACC as well. Okay. Uh, now here in we are not uh, we are not discussing that uh, uh, ACC can enter into partnership with which type of persons or which type of professionals. No, we are not discussing that. But we are discussing what type of firm I'd call a firm of certified chartered accountants. Okay. Certified chartered accountants for two conditions. Two conditions. The firm should be registered with ACCA. The firm should be registered with ACCA first. Second, at least 50% of the partners, at least 50% of the partners should be ACCA members. Should be ACCA members. These are the two conditions for a firm to be called as a certified chartered accountant firm or a firm of certified chartered accountants. Is it clear everyone? Is it clear everyone? Okay, now give me an example. Uh, see, XYZ and company, uh, free partners, six partners are ACCA. So can we say that this, this is a firm of uh, certified chartered accountants? No, because a bare minimum 50% means a bare minimum eight partners are should be ACC members. And how many partners are ACC members? Only six. So can we say that this is a form of ACC, a uh, form of ACC, a form of uh, certified chartered accountants? No, no, this is not a form of certified chartered accountants. Is it clear, everyone? Okay, now, now structure of our class, uh, as I've already discussed, we'll be dividing our class or dividing every topic of our classes into three parts. One will be concept building. Second will be technical articles. Okay, if there, is, if there are any technical articles, okay, because there are chapters which doesn't have any technical articles, like for example, money laundering chapter that we are going to discuss today. Stage three is a past exam paper. We'll be discussing the questions from the past exam papers along with their examiner reports if those are available in the platform okay whatever is available definitely we'll try to discuss that okay if there are any important points given in the examiner reports i will extract that and discuss in the class now understand a study test a study test is it mandatory to be read is it mandatory to read the study text in the, for us see i'll tell you i'll tell you there can be two approaches as I have said, as I have said, that uh, the knowledge, the level of knowledge that is required should be is very low. As I have told you multiple times in today's class, the level of knowledge that is required is very less, and the level of application that you have to give it should be very high. Now, at this juncture, when we have only uh, two months left for our exam, I uh, 
from my recommendation point of view whatever knowledge that i will give you in the class is more than sufficient is more than sufficient so study text is not mandatory is not mandatory okay but yes if you are a student you can say basically if you want to read the uh, study text i am not stopping you but i will tell you my recommendation considering that you have a limited time now you should use your time in an optimum manner okay so rather than going into study text and reading each and every lines which will just be giving you the knowledge that i have gave you in a you can say uh, in a uh, much more uh, detailed manner okay i will recommend you to uh, go in that time you rather use the time to practice the questions from the knowledge that i have given you okay so basically so what i'm trying to say here is rather than uh, 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 you can say giving the time to reading in reading the study test you should devote that time in practicing questions and developing your application skills is what i will recommend is what i will recommend okay now class see uh, when we are taking uh, having this class okay in sbr generally i recommend my students to write the notes along with me but that's not the case in triple a what i recommend to my students in triple a is when you are coming for a class have a notebook and a pen with you guys and but don't write the notes which i am giving you okay these notes don't write that please don't write these notes because if you just write these notes two points one you will be uh, because that's only a theory right that's only theory that's no that's no sum solving involved right so you will your mind will be involved in writing the notes only okay and you will not be able to understand what i am trying to say okay so what you can do is in the pen and the paper that you have kept with you guys only write the only write the points if you are if i am giving you time to assess something okay let's suppose if i am solving any question and i will give you a 5 minutes time to evaluate the answer or if to evaluate the uh, read the question read the requirement and try to write the points on your own so just a uh, brainstorming thing you have to do in your notebook okay if you have to think, uh, think that okay sir is giving a very important example now uh, which i think i should write in my notes then you can take it down generally if you will you will see that whenever i give an example also i will write that example also in my notes and after this class i will send you these notes which you can take a print of it which you can take a print of it and make a book along with it make a book along with it okay make a book along with it like let's suppose this way see i have also done for my from my past batches see this is what i have done after each batch after each batch i see this is in this much papers your triple a syllabus will get completed and in this one it's not only the it's not only the knowledge it's the knowledge plus the solution of you can say around 50 uh, 50 questions solution for around 50 questions this much so i think that will be much more easier way to study the triple a paper okay so what you have to do you have to take a print of these notes after every class okay and when you are taking a print keep all the print in one uh, in one file okay uh, don't uh, keep loose sheets along with you don't keep loose sheets please punch it in a file okay so that's what i will recommend but the choice is yours again now study format it should be a cumulative approach this is what i recommend in my fr in my spr and in triple a as well okay you should follow cumulative approach what is the meaning of cumulative approach let's suppose uh, we are discussing a uh, part d of the syllabus that is uh, planning and uh, audit of historical financial statements and it will take somewhere in the range of around 6 uh, class so uh, when we are discussing that when we are discussing that so after first class when we are done with the first class you have to revise the first class when we after the second class you have to revise first class plus second class after third class you have to revise the first class plus second class plus third class so this is called cumulative approach what will happen with this one what will happen with this one is when you will reach the sixth class you will see the revising the first class will take you only 5 10 minutes but uh, that will the all the knowledge will get punched in here with utmost clarity with utmost clarity so please do follow cumulative approach what we uh, what will happen with this one if you follow cumulative approach a day before the exam you will not be struggling with the knowledge 
at least you will not be struggling with the knowledge okay you will have to apply your application skills that's all and no knowledge challenge will be there so that's all i have to say about triple a paper that's this is all about the orientation of triple a paper yes if you have any uh, points that you want to discuss specifically about triple a paper definitely we can do that uh, or else we'll start the topic tell me guys in is it clear so far everyone clear or if you have any specific points to discuss with me uh, i am up for discussion is it clear so far everyone what will be the duration of class uh, see today uh, the duration will be uh, the around 2 hours only not much we will wrap up the class at 2 hours today uh, 12 or 12:30 will wrap up the class today but from uh, next day that is uh, see uh, i'll tell you few things okay let me tell you the saturday sunday we have we will have the class from 10 to 2 pm we will have the class from 10 to 2 pm but since we have started it uh, a little uh, late so it will not be practically possible for us to complete the syllabus only for from the weekend classes okay so we have to we have to take up some weekday classes as well the schedule of which i will be sharing with you guys uh, during this week okay so from the next saturday sunday uh, we will have class from 10 to 2 okay and uh, also during this week i will be sending you the schedule of our extra classes okay most probably it will be in the evening not in the morning the extra classes will be in the evening in the, not in the morning okay so don't worry at all and the topics which will be covering in the extra class will be altogether different so uh, if any student is uh, unable to uh, cover up or unable to come in the evening like uh, week weekdays live classes so they need not worry at all about it they need not worry at all about it so they can cover uh, it through video and i will ensure that the part b and part e that is the important part of our syllabus will be covered in the weekend classes part d and part e will be covered in the weekend classes considering that this is of very high importance and i will want every one of you to attempt it live okay see it live might be part a i will be taking up in the weekday classes okay part a or you can say part c i will cover in weekday classes part f i will cover in weekday classes okay but part uh, d and part e definitely i will be covering in the weekend classes only considering the importance of this chapter i hope is it it is clear to everyone is it clear anyone having any challenges with this one super okay now uh, the extra classes will be happening in the evening so uh, just want to uh, discuss that uh, so though i have not planned anything but yes i have to do the planning uh, i have to schedule the classes uh, see my schedule and accordingly i'll see the uh, uh, see the class which day i have to can take the classes and how many classes a week is required that i will evaluate but yes i will require the inputs what time is suitable for you guys for an evening classes if you have any inputs definitely you can give otherwise i will schedule it uh, according to my uh, schedule after 6 pm definitely it will be after 6 pm i was considering it from 7 pm will that work for everyone 7 after 7 pm fair enough fair enough so i will schedule it from 7 pm now so that's all about the orientation of triple a paper uh, let's take a break of uh, short break of 10 minutes and then we'll uh, start with the chapter okay Let's take a short break of ten minutes. It's eleven seventeen now. We'll uh, start at eleven twenty-five. Okay. Uh, let's uh, resume our classes. So, the topic one that we have to study today is uh, money laundering. And money laundering is a topic that we have to cover from a syllabus area A. That is a regulatory environment. It is a regulatory environment. Now, understand, guys. Understand that uh, when we study uh, money laundering which is the part of our syllabus area a uh, regulatory environment and as we know that uh, syllabus area a regulatory environment is of moderate priority in the exam moderate priority in the exam okay sorry 223 i right okay uh, but i believe money laundering as a part of a regulatory environment is of it can be of high priority as well for march 2023 attempt why 
because i have seen that from the in the last two attempts in the last two attempts the importance of money laundering has reduced okay so it might be the case that in march 2023 attempt the importance again again it will uh, it can uh, be asked in the exam okay it's my assumption it's my assumption so uh, as compared to other chapters of a regulatory environment there are around uh, eight chap total eight topics that you have to study in regulatory environment out of which i believe that money laundering is of very high importance for march 2023 attempt okay it doesn't mean that the other chapters are less important but i am saying that it is uh, of high importance okay that's what i'm saying don't take it uh, in the other way like uh, the other chapters are irrelevant or less important no i'm just saying that this chapter is might be of high importance now what all things we have to study in this chapter is uh, just a minute okay the point that we have to study in this chapter is first what is the meaning of money laundering what are the process how see understand whenever we have to audit or report something in the movies you have to study you would have heard this line that if you have to uh, catch hold of a thief you have to think like a thief right tell me yes or no if you have to catch hold of a thief you have to think like a thief now if you have to catch hold of a money laundering transaction you have to understand how a money laundering transaction takes place how a money laundering transaction takes place by the, is the, taken place by the money launderers the person who does the money laundering how they actually do it so that's what we are studying here process or stages of money laundering okay see basically we will understand uh, what are the process what is the process or what are the stages stages that a money launderer applies to do money laundering okay that's what we will study in this one now here the third point is what you have to study is anti money laundering policies or procedures that an audit firm should have in place basically we should have see okay. understand guys uh, every uh, jurisdiction or every law have the anti uh, you can say let's suppose if uh, we are talking about uh, in defense right uh, if you are talking about defense what is defense anti terrorist right defense is anti terrorist activities right that deals with anti terrorist now uh, basically same thing audit firm is dealing with what uh, anything which is against the law right and money laundering is against the law so it says the audit firm should have a policy in place to deal with money laundering activities and those policies are called as anti money laundering policies and procedures all of the all the audit firms are required to have this in place are required to have this in place okay basically this will deal uh, this will this anti money laundering policy or procedures will state how to detect how to detect that money laundering transaction has happened place in our, any of our client and if we find that okay this this is a money laundering there is a money laundering transaction that has taken place in our client then how will we report it then how will we report it will we report money laundering in the audit report or we are required to report money laundering to to the regulators or to anyone else but what should be the process for it that's what we have to understand okay so first is we will understand what is the meaning of money laundering then we will understand how a money laundering transaction takes place then we will understand what are the policies and procedures that an audit firm should have to detect and report the money laundering procedures okay now and the client screening process client screening process is a part of the uh, anti money laundering policies and procedures we will you will study okay it since it is a very important part and has gained importance in the current years uh, so that's the reason uh, i'll just give you a brief about it have you heard about the term called kyc any time kyc have you heard about the term called kyc what is full form of it many of them uh, many of my students doesn't know the full form also can you tell me what is full form kyc know your customer very good what are the details that they take in kyc tell me they will take all your personal details like what is your uh, if you are residing in india 
what is your aadhar number what is your pan number what is your home address what is your permanent address what is your correspondence address what is your office address they talk till tick all of the details right what is your uh, about the details about your parents or your spouse they'll take all the details why 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 because if they find uh, in your bank account any uh, transaction which is suspicious money laundering they can catch hold of you okay that's what is called client screening process or customer due diligence that know your customer is one of the example of that okay it's just one of an example of that i'm saying so these are the four things which you have to study in money laundering chapter now technical article there are no technical articles in the past it has been tested for this much in the past is a tested for this much okay now uh, uh, after december 18 also it had been tested for once or twice but yes we don't have the exact details for that okay so uh, that's what the details is currently available with me okay i believe in march 2021 it has been tested but i have to update this file okay i think that i'll check and update it uh, before the next class now considering uh, this in the mind now understand guys everyone all of you all of you guys come on here can anyone tell me what do you understand by the term money laundering we are entering into our syllabus now we are entering into our syllabus now so now anyone can anyone tell me what is your understanding about money laundering what do you understand by the term money laundering come on guys i'll tell you my approach for discussing in the class is first always i will take your views first i will take your views then i will give my views then uh, we will reconcile our views and then we will compare our views with what is given in the book or the article or by the acca and we if we feel without even reading the what is given in the book if without even reading what is given in the book we are able to understand it in a better manner then we we'll ignore what is given in the book if we feel in the book something extra is given we will understand try we will try to understand that is it clear okay so please uh, tell me your views what do you understand by money laundering some fraudulent activities in cash and bank accounts okay fine correct hiding the source of money fine converting cash or unaccounted money to accounted money uh, no ishan no uh what you are saying uh, basically unaccounted money to accounted money is converting black money to white money that is not money laundering converting black money to white money is not money laundering no that is not money laundering tell me what do you understand that term money laundering all of you guys come on only a set of few students are answering the answer in the class and no one else come on everyone please participate in the class what do you understand the term money laundering what do you understand the term money laundering hiding the source of money from illegal activities very good uh, tejashree again uh, illegal ways of earning okay correct now let me give you a understanding first understand the money laundering some students said uh, accounting the unaccounted money this is partially correct but understand what needs to be added in this one the unaccounted money should come from illegal sources which is uh, again told by tejashree okay or uh, neha also understand that what can be illegal sources what can be illegal sources bribery is an illegal way uh, or you can say a uh, ransom money ransom money is an illegal way or you can say uh, money from terrorist activities the money that comes from uh, terrorist activities is an illegal way so just what you can say if you have white black money you are converting that to white money is not a, is not money laundering but <coughs> sorry sorry just give me a minute please yeah 
Yeah. Uh, but uh, if that black money has come from illegal ways, if it has come from illegal ways, and we are converting that illegal money into legal money and projecting it to the public that it is my legal money, that is called as money laundering. So rather than saying converting black money to white money, I can say converting illegal money to legal money. Though you will feel we, both of them are same, but there is a difference. All the white money, all the black money cannot be illegal money. All the black money cannot be illegal money. Money from gambling again. Yes, it comes here. It comes here. All the illegal money when it gets placed into this legal system it is called as money laundering it is called as money laundering it is called as money laundering and being projected that as if it is my legal money only actually it was illegal money but we are projecting as if it is a legal money only like for example i will tell you uh Terrorist, a group of terrorists got uh, INR for cross as illegal money. Okay, they got illegal money for cross. Okay, now it's an illegal money, right? Now they have to convert it into legal money. So what they did, they purchased a luxury car from that. They purchased a luxury car from that money. Now, by giving cash. Now, can anyone question that luxury car? See, if you are having that cash in hand, anyone can question that. But if you are having luxury car with you, can anyone question that? Tell me. Can anyone question that? No. Now, what will you do? That luxury car, you will use it for six months or seven months and then sell it off. And then sell it off. And then you take the money in your bank account. Don't you think this illegal money gets converted into legal money? Tell me. Yes or no? This process is called as money laundering. This process is called money laundering. This process is called money laundering. Or let's suppose, or let's suppose what you do. Uh, any of you have seen that movie called uh, what we call it as uh, what was the name of that movie? Uh, a Rajni Khan's movie. Uh, I'm not able to recall that name. Uh, in which uh, what they do is uh, they collect the money from all the politicians, send it to uh, abroad, send it to abroad, and collect all the money to Indian bank account as a by way of donation, by way of donation, right? Again, that is also called as a, a money laundering process. That process is also called money laundering. When you are making the illegal money accounted in the system as a legal money. Yes, Abhi, right. You are you are saying it rightly. So uh, I got record it right now. So uh, that's what that's the process. Yes, Sandeep. Yes. So uh, when it comes to the name of movie, all of you will respond. But when it comes to act questions, you will not. None of you will respond. Huh? <laughs> okay. So uh, again, okay. understand, guys. So basically, uh, money laundering is a process. Is a process of converting the illegal money into legal money by hiding the actual source of the money by hiding the actual source of the money now let's understand what is the definition given in your book understand understand guys money laundering meaning the definition as per your bcp material can you please all of you please read this definition can you please read this definition, this part, the highlighted part? Can you please read it? The process by which criminals, the criminals, why criminals? ACCA says that the person uh, money laundering is a criminal activity. And the person who does money laundering are criminals, are criminals. Okay, so it says that uh, money laundering is a criminal activity and anyone who does the criminal activities are criminals, right? So it says the process by which criminals attempt to conceal the true origin and the ownership of the proceeds from the criminal activity, okay? 
whatever proceeds has come from the criminal activity you are trying to hide the actual source of it allowing to maintain the control over the proceeds you understand understand though you are hiding the so though you are hiding the source though you are hiding the source but you are not losing the control over the money but you are not losing the control over the money it's not that in the hunt in the hunt to to convert the illegal money into legal money you will lose the control no you are not losing the control you are keeping the control with yourself you are living keeping the control with yourself let's suppose let's suppose when i had the money i sent it abroad uh, and i again took the money by way of donation do you think in this process i lost the control of money do you think in this process i lost the control of the money no no i didn't lose the control of the money, of the money right now let's suppose i had the illegal money and i bought a luxury car or a luxury house do you think uh, i lost the control over the money no no i have not lost the control over the money right the control of money is with me only okay and ultimately providing a cover for the true source of their income meaning what means three things three things understand three things first you are trying to conceal the source of income you are trying to conceal conceal the source of income you are keeping the control over that money and you are giving a cover to the source of income so three things you have to keep in mind three things what conceal plus control plus cover so this is what is the meaning of money laundering conceal the true source control over the money and cover for the true source how will we cover that will I, that i'll discuss right now just give me a minute but i believe conceal and control is clear to all of you please confirm guys i believe conceal and control is clear to all of you now understand the standard says that uh, acca says that this money laundering is done in three stages this money laundering is done in three stages what are the three stages it says the three stages are called placement placement layering and integration what is the meaning of all these three i'll give you example i'll give you example let's suppose i had four crores of illegal money with me okay uh, i had four i have four crores of uh, money with me okay let's suppose i am a terrorist now okay uh, i am a terrorist i have uh, i have done a terrorist activity okay uh, and i have received four crores money okay now uh, i want to convert uh, this is in cash this is in cash now i want to convert this money into legal money so what will i do uh, definitely uh, definitely i cannot go and place this money in the bank account because if i will uh, don't you think if i will go and place this money in the bank account four crores the bank authorities will uh, will be become suspicious and they will try to catch hold of me right right now what will i do i will try to purchase some real estate properties right real estate i'll try to uh, i'll try to spend the money in real estate because in real estate lot of cash transactions happen right so i what i'll do i'll purchase a luxury home for myself i'll purchase a luxury home for myself uh, from this cash transaction okay now use it for 6 7 months then again sell it off when i'm selling this property i will take the money in my bank account now can anyone question this this transfer of money can anyone question this transfer of money tell me can anyone question this transfer of money no understand when you bought that when you bought that property when you bought that property at that point itself your illegal money got converted to legal money you got got converted to legal money but again why are you uh, again why you sold this property tell me why why you sold this property what was the requirement to sell tell me what was the requirement to sell i am doing layering now because if i will just keep this house with me anyone can question from where you bought this house from where you bought this house now what i will do i will try to do multiple transactions with that money i will try to do multiple transactions with that money okay what i will do i will uh, sell that house uh, realize cash i will uh, send that money abroad and receive that as a donation that money 
again i will give as a donation to the schools and collect the money through school fees that is school fees again so if i will do multiple layering of the money and even if the regulator catches the and uh, it becomes suspicious that okay this person have might have done money laundering what will they do okay this person has received school fees a school fees is not a money from money laundering okay this person has given donation to the school that is also not a money laundering okay from where the money got the money for donation he got the money from abroad he got the money from abroad okay why as a donation again so that is not an also not a illegal money so what will happen if you do multiple layering the a time will come the regulators will not, will not want to go much into down much down the level much down the level or much they will not try to dig into that down that down okay they will get uh, you can say they will get irritated and they will not dig much down okay they feel okay this might be a uh, this might be legal money only so it means you do multiple layering in a way in a way that it appears to be a legal money that it uh, that it it is so well merged into the legal system that even the money launderer is unable to track which is a legal money and which is illegal money question can arise for house also yes neha it can arise for house also that's the reason that's the reason he sold the house that's the reason he sold the house and he is doing multiple layers he is doing multiple layers okay so even if the regulators try to find out they will have to drill down so much down they will have to so much drill down that a point will come that they will not want to go down the river okay and this is why layering is done and due to layering this is due to layering the illegal money is so much blended into the legal system becomes so much blended blended into the legal system that it becomes uh, practically impossible to differentiate that what is which how much is illegal money and how much is legal money and even the money launderer uh, will not be able to do that it becomes so much blended into the legal system that's what is called integration that's what is called as integration are you understanding the stages of money laundering the process of money laundering same way we can question the initial cash in uh, cash right where did you get the money to purchase that car or where Uh, there should be some source of income. Agree, uh, Sam. Uh, agree, uh, Mr. Samson. Whoever it is, okay. So that's the reason why they are doing layering of transactions. Why they are doing layering of transactions? They are doing layering of transactions. See, uh, it doesn't mean when it, it when there is a layering, the there is no risk. I cannot say that because the risk is there, okay. But the risk gets reduced by layering. the risk gets reduced by layering are you able to understand it guys all of you are you able to understand this is it clear everyone let us understand the process and then again i'll take up certain examples and uh, try to uh, explain the concept again now this cover is called integration this is the cover i call it integration basically when in integration what happens is it provides a cover to the illegal money it provides a cover to the illegal money now example read the example read the example please read the example please read the example please so what is here happening a gangster gets money from terrorist activities anti national activities which is illegal money right that is cash this illegal money arising out of terrorist activities is a criminal activity right uh, the cash of 100 million he has to convert this illegal money into legal money so what will do he will deposit that in the bank account he will deposit that in the bank account okay once he deposits the money in the bank account it becomes legal money it becomes legal money but again the question comes up sir can he uh, can he deposit the money in the bank account see If it is happened ten years back, yes, he can deposit. But if it is now, no, he cannot because the bank authorities have become uh, much active now these days. Okay, uh, or like as compared to what it was ten uh, to fifteen years back. Okay, so the process. See, as the financial system gets evolved, terrorists also gets evolved. Are you understanding this? As the financial systems gets evolved with time. the terrorists 
process of doing money laundering also gets evolved with time okay now understand <clears throat> no definition money laundering is a process by which criminals attempt to conceal the true identity or source of money discussed received or generated from illegal sources okay and that attempt to convert the illegal money into the legal money this is a definition by written by me okay basically i am trying to ease what is given in the book as compared to what is given in the book okay so you can see simple is a process money laundering is what is a process wherein the criminals try to conceal the true source of income by converting the illegal money into the legal money simple simple definition simple definition see it's not the case that uh, in the exam when you are writing an answer of money laundering you have to write this definition only no you can write the definition in your own words and that's all together accepted that's not a challenge at all okay it's not that you have to buy hard this definition only no 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 not at all even if you write a simple definition like this you get full marks for it you get full marks for it okay now understand few few important points Okay. Now understand, money laundering is a process by which criminal activity is a process, a criminal activity, and process owners, that is money launderers, are called as criminals. Black money or which tax is not paid, converted to white money. Can we say this is money laundering? This is not money laundering. This is not a money laundering. This is not a money laundering. Not a money laundering. Rather, illegal money being converted to legal money is a money laundering. Is a now let's understand the stages or process of or elements of money money laundering. In the exam, the there can be any term used. It can ask to explain the stages of money laundering. It can ask you the process of money laundering. It can ask you the elements of money laundering. The answer to all of them is the same. You have to write three things. You have to write three things. What placement plus uh, layering, layering plus integration. Now let's understand about each of them. Placement. Placement. Understand. Placement is the first step towards money laundering. First step towards money laundering. And what is the objective? Objective is to convert. To convert. Illegal money, illegal money in the legal uh, to legal money, illegal money to legal money. Okay. Now, first step towards money laundering, and in this step, in this step, the illegal money, illegal money is placed into the understand is placed in the legal system. And now this placement can be done in any manner. This placement can be done in any manner, by way of bank deposits, by way of purchase of car, by way of purchase of house, by any given manner. By any given manner. Now understand, understand. See, uh, you know about the process of placement. You know a brief understanding. You have to have the brief understanding of the placement, layering, and integration. Tell me in which of these three stages. The risk of being caught is very high. Tell me, where in which process the risk is very high? Tell me, placement, layering, or integration. Think like a money launderer now. Think like a money launderer and tell me where is the where the risk is very high. Where the risk is very high. Placement. Why? Because at that point you do have the cash in hand. You are exposed. You are exposed. You are exposed. You do have that money in your hand. That illegal money. You do have that illegal money in the hand. Okay. So that's the reason. You can I write here the risk of being caught. The risk of being caught is very high.
okay the risk of being caught is very high why because the money launderer the money launderer has the illegal money has the illegal money in hand and uh, at the time of and at the time of placement at the time of placement the counter party the counter party can ask for the for the source of the money can ask for the source of money understand see why why understand let's suppose uh let's suppose you are selling your house you are, you are selling your house you are selling your house okay and uh, the uh, the counter party gives you the money in bank account you will not ask anything right because that's a legal money from, uh, from bank to bank transaction you will not ask anything but let's suppose you are selling your house for 2 crores okay and the counter party says that i will give you the money in cash don't think this will raise a suspicion in your mind this will lay the suspicion in your mind tell me yes or no right and you might ask or might not you will ask definitely will ask what is the source of the money what is the source of the money from where you got this much cash from where you got this much cash 2 crores cash from where you got right and the, so that's the reason the risk of being caught at the time of placement is very high is significant it's very 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 high okay the risk of being caught is very high okay now objective is to convert the illegal money in the to the legal money now concept of politically exposed persons can anyone tell me what is the meaning of politically exposed persons anyone who can answer what is the meaning of politically exposed persons if if you feel that politically exposed persons are the persons who are exposed to politics the answer is no now please tell me what is the meaning of politically exposed persons influencer people very good very good mr samson okay the person uh, having influence over society example uh in india example okay these are called influencer people these are called influencer people okay uh the person basically uh, see when we say politically exposed persons it doesn't mean that persons who are linked to politics no any person having uh having the influence over society having the influence let's suppose i tell you Let's suppose Salman Khan, Salman Khan or Amitabh Bachchan goes to the bank to deposit a crore, uh, one crore money in the bank account. The person who the cashier or the the cashier will get influenced. Oh, Amitabh Bachchan is there in my counter. Amitabh Bachchan is there in my counter, and he might forget his duty. He might forget his duty to ask that sir from where he got this money, and considering oh he is Amitabh Bachchan, he will take the money, right? so the risk here is high or low tell me the risk here is high or low in case of politically exposed persons tell me the risk again becomes very high not for the uh, money launderers but for the government but for the government not for the money launderers but for the government now so so what happens is uh, there should be the standard says that there should be a there should be a definite rules and regulations for pep as well as the risk is very high as the risk is very high is it clear everyone is it clear everyone now so this is all about placement 
now coming to uh, layering coming to layering understand once the illegal money is placed in the legal system let's suppose let's suppose you have bought the house you have already bought the house you are relieved oh my god at least the money got placed in the system right now the risk will decrease considerably if you are not caught at the placement if you are not caught at the placement you will feel a sigh of relief you will feel a sigh of relief okay you will feel a sigh of relief okay now but the risk has decreased but not mitigated the risk has decreased but not mitigated so now what will i do i will try to further reduce the risk how by doing by doing layering by doing layering by doing layering by doing layering okay so that the the more the more the layering the less exposed i am the more the layering the less exposed i am and the less the exposed i am the less the risk the less the risk so i will uh, do multiple layers of planning okay so layering the so step number 2 is layering this is the st second step or second stage of money laundering process objective is to conceal the true source of money okay now you uh, might say we are objective you might say that i am converting illegal money to legal money no because when you are doing see i write here in placement you are converting illegal money to legal money understand but in layering you are converting in layering you are converting legal money to legal money do you accept this fact do you accept this fact do you accept this fact in layering you are converting legal money to legal money not illegal money to legal money do you accept this fact please confirm guys all of you right but then why are we doing this because i want to make the legal money much more secure legal money much more secure legal money i want to make it much more secure legal money that's why i am entering into this transaction okay so to conceal the true source of money or or i write or to uh, make legal money uh, a much or secure legal money okay and what will be do in this case a series of transactions are undertaken to conceal the true source of money to conceal the true source of money legal money is converted into much more secure legal money i have already written here so i'll write a bit from here okay now question number 1 why is this called as a legal money why it is called as legal money because because illegal money because uh illegal money alright because it got converted to uh legal money at placement itself as per term if this is already a legal money then what's the need of layering to become make uh it more secure legal money by, uh, by becoming less exposed less exposed by doing series of or layers of transactions is it clear everyone so far now there is an example as well uh can you please read this example can you please try to read this example all of you the one that is highlighted can you please try to read this example is it clear everyone the example is clear everyone 
Is the example clear, everyone? Is the example clear, everyone? Come on, guys, tell me. Fair enough. Fair enough. Now let's come to step stage number three or step process number three or element number three. Understand? Integration. Initial transaction should be recorded uh, in journal. No. So can't be detected by using our threshold as it is a huge amount. See, Samsung understand that uh, I'm not saying by doing layering, we are uh, we have mitigated the risk. No. By doing layering, we are just uh, reducing the risk. We are just reducing the risk. Okay, might be the case. See, understand when we are doing layering. Okay, when you do audit, you will do audit only for this year or for the past year also. Tell me. You will do audit only for this year or for the past years as well. Tell me, Samsung. You will do only for this year. When this layering is done, it's done in a way, it's done in a way, it's, it's done in a way, it's done in a way. Let's suppose I bought the house in the previous year, in the current year I'll sell and I will uh, use that money to uh, purchase something else. See, uh, definitely I'll accept your fact that in the year when the placement is done, the risk is very high and I've already told that as well, okay? During placement, the risk is very high. But if you escape the escape from placement, if you escape from placement, then you are doing layering. If you are caught at the time of placement, no need of layering, right? So let's suppose placement was done in the previous year and you are uh, assuming that you have escaped that. In the current year, you are selling that house and purchasing something else. In the next year, again, you will do something else. So let's suppose in the next to next year, you will find this transaction is suspicious. Then you will drill down to a previous year, again, previous year, again, previous year, again, previous year. A time will come, you will not want to drill further. Right? That's why layering is done. That's why layering is done. Okay. Now, but yes, you have to understand all of you guys that you have to think practically. If you uh, if you have to think like that money launder, it is then you will be able to understand this. Okay, let's think like if we have some illegal money in hand, how will we try to escape from the government? If you think from this angle, definitely we'll get answers for everything. Okay, now integration. This is the last process, last stage of process of money laundering, and the objective is to provide cover over the illegal. Money. money. Why? How? Uh, how? Uh, how? Illegal money due to layering. Due to layering. Illegal money uh, gets so well blended in the legal system the legal system that uh, it is practically difficult or impossible to segregate the legal and illegal money. This process is called as integration. And this is an outcome of placement and layering. This is an outcome of placement and layering. Is it clear, everyone? Is it clear, everyone? Now, what are the business models with a very high risk of money laundering? What are the business models? I tell you. Business. With a cash model. Has a very high risk. Example. Example, restaurants, restaurants, 
example uh, we can say uh, real estate real estate is a uh, etc right so any uh, any uh, you can say any business model wherein the transactions happen a uh, lot of transactions happens or significant transactions happen cash those are the business models where the risk of money laundering is significant is significant is it clear everyone is it clear everyone is it clear everyone okay now see today we have understood the uh, orientation of our triple a paper we have understood what is a money laundering we have understood how money laundering is being done in our next class we will uh, study about what are the anti money laundering procedures and how uh, basically how to detect and how to report how to detect a money laundering and how to report a money laundering okay that's what we will be studying in the next class okay uh, for that i will recommend you guys to first uh, revise this class and come in the next revise this class okay also during this week i will be giving you a schedule of our weekday class as well so that we will cover our the syllabus cover up the syllabus uh, within timelines okay this triple a class will be uh, in the range of around 60 to 70 hours not more than that in the range of 60 to 70 hours not more than that okay so uh, but yes i will uh, and one more suggestion from my side is please 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 make it a interactive session please make it otherwise this uh, live class will not make any sense the only difference between live class and a recorded class is the interaction you lack interaction and that's the reason why i have uh, uh, basically i have tried to make this live class happen for you guys because it triple is a paper wherein you should attend live class because in the recordings you cannot do the interaction with the faculty and this interaction is much 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 required for triple so that's the reason uh, why i have uh, uh, place an emphasis on live class so make an optimum use of it okay that's all for the day uh, thank you guys thank you all of you i'll share the notes in the group and definitely and we'll see in the next class thank you thank you all of you bye bye